What's up YouTube? It's your boy Josh Reese back at it again with another video. Um, before we get started, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe and we'll get right into it. So today I wanted to talk about my experience getting into optometry school. Um, kind of what my application looked like, share some numbers from my own life. Not to, I don't want to like, uh, feel like I'm bragging or uh, telling you what you need to do. I just know these kind of videos were super helpful to me. And it's, um, you know, amazing to see what's possible and, and kind of compare yourself to it and get that motivation you need to, to ultimately get into optometry school. So, um, first off, I'm going to Brigham Young University. Uh, the university you go to, they, they look at that in your application, right? Um, it's not quite like an Ivy League school or anything like that, but it is, you know, a little... A little bit more than like a state school they'd, they'd say okay you know so they they understand that it's a little bit harder than normal schools a little bit more competitive so um, there's that um, just so so um, schools will kind of look at BYU not quite like oh if you got a C in a class it really means you got a B uh, because it's that much harder it's more like oh if you got a B plus it really means you more likely got like an A minus. So the gap's not super huge um, between BYU and other schools, but they do understand it's a little bit more competitive. Now, as far as GPA goes, um, at the time of application to optometry school, I had a GPA of 3.82, um, which is kind of high now that I think of it, um, but I always kind of surrounded myself with really smart people to study with. And so I was always a little bummed that I had below a 3.9 anything, you know. But looking at the averages, the average uh, applicant to uh, optometry school is about a 3.5. So if you have anything above a 3.5, that's a pat on the back. You know, that's good enough GPA that they're gonna go, woo! You know, they're, they're academically challenged, or they challenge themselves academically and, and they can, you know, do well in optometry school. And, you know, honestly, GPA is just them to um, kind of weed out those that that aren't doing so well in school. So as long as you have above a 3.0, they'll still look at your application. Uh, and if you have below that, just make sure that other parts of your application stand out that much more. Um, so at the time of application, I had a 3.82, but I did leave a lot of hard classes until the end. So right now I have about a 3.73. And I still have one more semester, so it'll probably be lower than that. Um, I drop about a point a semester or so. Um, so that's my GPA. As far as OAT scores go, so I had a 360 on my OAT. That's the, um, the total, the academic average, right? And then uh, the total science score, I believe I had a 370. So... I did pretty well. That's about the 90th percentile. Um, is a 360, 370. Um, 400's the highest score you can get. 200's the lowest score. 300 is average. So um, if you have above a 300 in the OAT, that means you're in. You did it. You know that's um, kind of like the 3.0 mark in the GPA. If you have a 3.0 and a 300, those are good enough. Um, good enough scores that they're going to look at your application you know they're going to consider you as an applicant so just make sure that if you have above a 300 and um you know above a 3.0 that you just stand out that much more um you are going to be considered as an applicant i know a lot of people who have gotten in with lower than 300 oats and lower than two, uh 3.0 gpas so you'll do just fine as an applicant uh, if you have at least 300 and 3.0. Um, so as far as let's shadowing uh, is concerned, I only had about seven hours of shadow. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's not uh, too much. I had about four hours with one doctor, two hours with another doctor, and about like an hour phone call with another doctor because of COVID. I couldn't go shadow, so I just you know, called him for an hour, talked about what life's like uh, as a contact lens specialist for this doctor. Um, but yeah, so they're just looking that you've shadowed three or four people 
Uh, honestly, I kind of did the bare minimum with shadowing to, to know that I got exposed out there. Um, one part about the OptomCast application though is they do um, put all of the opt optometric experience into one section. So in that section, I didn't just have shadowing, I had all the hours I worked as an optician and all the hours I worked as a vision therapist. So, you know, I've been working as a vision therapist for over a year and as an optician for a few months before that. Um, so, so I had um, more hours of optometric experience. I don't just have only seven hours of exposure to opt optometry in any regard, but just so you know, not to, you don't have to put a heavy emphasis like a lot of schools want you to in shadowing. You just need to do it enough that they know, okay, you know kind of what the field is like uh, and you know different um, professions, you know um, how different it can be. So um, next thing is kind of work experience beyond um, being a vision therapist and optician. I also worked as a custodian for a year. My freshman year of college, I just cleaned buildings. That's what I did. I woke up at 6 a.m. and cleaned buildings. Um, but... You know, I, I framed it in the best that I could. So I actually um, was in charge of volunteers that would clean buildings. So it was at the missionary training center. So the missionaries would come for service and I would help them or direct them clean the building. So you wanna make sure you word every job in the best light you can, not just custodian. But I think I was, um, you know, volunteer manager uh, for, um, Volu missionary volunteer manager um, custodial something so just make sure you word every job you've had uh, to make sure it, um, you're not trying to demean it you're trying to really put out there what you did and why it was meaningful now I also worked as a um, as a Spanish instructor so I would teach Spanish to missionaries at the MTC as well um, both as a tutor and as a teacher and I also worked in a chemistry lab so I would prepare the demonstrations for the chemistry department at BYU uh, for the professors. Um, I only did that a few hours a week, but you know, it's a job and it's, it's a lot of fun. So, you know, you try to have jobs in as many different things as you can. Definitely 100% some optometry experience in there, but also some other passions you have, something that you can talk about. If you're super into, I don't know, cars, um, you, you want to have discussion points because they are going to read your application. And I know they definitely asked me about all of the work experience I had. They asked me how those jobs went. Uh, and if you're passionate, if you're working for something you're passionate about, like I'm passionate about chemistry, um, you're going to have a lot to talk about and it's going to be a lot better experience for you. Um, then it goes into service. So as far as service, I, I took a two, two gap years to serve as a missionary for the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, and so I just kind of put that in, you know, working at food banks, um, teaching people about religion, things like that. Um, I also was a part of a dance group where we'd dance and raise money for, um, for first-generation college students. Um, now that was a lot of fun. That was a good discussion point, uh, dancing. Um, I was also part of a singing group called The Voice for Good that did roughly the same thing. Um, you know, you just want to have creative, um, service opportunities. I know that a lot of people at BYU, there's a service called Friends for Sight and that's good. You know, you can show, um, that you are interested in optometry with some service that you do, but you don't want it to be all you do. Um, but serve in ways that are meaningful to you. Uh, they don't want to see the cookie cutter. I am only applying to optometry school. I only have service in optometry. Um, they want to see that you are a person with interests and disinterests and, you know, uh, service is one way that you can kind of stand yourself out for that. Um, so I guess that's, that's me and my application. All right. Um, so, you know, uh, I got into every school I applied to. Um, uh, and I know that you, as long as you are serving in ways that are meaningful to you right now, find ways to serve. Um, you're working, um, hopefully for an optometrist that's going to be kind of in the same boat that you want to be in, right? Work for an optometrist you look up to now 
and just make sure you have above a 3.0 uh, and a 300 on the OAT and your application is going to look just fine. So, um, you know, not saying these things to brag that I got into optometry school, but I know that you can too. And if you have any questions for me uh, about other things on my application, I know I probably skipped over some stuff. Go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Thank you. Bye.